Hi, my name's Katie and welcome to my fish keeping channel. Today I'm going to be showing you the Waterbox Clear Pro 7225, which is a six foot rimless glass tank. I've had this tank for about half a year now, so I thought it's about time that I do a review. I'm going to give an in-depth rundown of ordering the tank, setting it up and a review of the tank and the cabinet itself. If you would like to see more fish keeping content, please give my channel a subscribe and you can follow me on Instagram at littlefinsinlife. All right, let's get into the video. So the first thing I'll talk about is ordering the tank. I ordered mine from RC Discus Aquariums on the Gold Coast and then they ordered it from Waterbox in America to get it shipped to me. Because of COVID, it actually took about half a year to arrive. I originally ordered a five foot version of this tank, but that one missed the ship. So it was delayed by another two to three months. So I thought, well, since I'm waiting, I may as well just upgrade it to the six foot as you do. And then the six foot one got stuck behind another ship. So it was a whole process and it was really tough waiting so long for it. It really taught me how to be patient. Then what happened was the glass tank arrived, but the cabinet got separated and the freight company originally was saying that they didn't have it on record. However, luckily it was located at a pet store in Melbourne and arrived about a week later. As far as packaging goes, the tank came in a wooden box and was very, very heavy. We didn't see a point in actually moving it inside the house without the cabinet because we would have to get a few people to move it and then have to get them to come over again to put it on top of the cabinet. Um, so we just left it actually in the carport and I parked my car somewhere else for the week while we awaited for the cabinet to arrive. The cabinet ended up arriving a week later and was flat packed in a couple of cardboard boxes. For the setup, my fiance helped set it up for me and by helped, I mean, he kind of did the whole thing. Um, I have a history of setting things up incorrectly and my tight for a screw is apparently not very tight. So since it's going to be holding 650 litres of water, we thought it's probably best that he puts the cabinet together. Um, it took him around about like two to three hours. As far as the ease of setting up the flat pack, the, the instructions I recommend actually reading ahead in them because there was a few things that didn't seem like they should have been done in the order that they did and then he had to go back and undo certain things to get it together. So the instructions can be a little bit difficult to follow. So have a read ahead of them. Now to get the actual tank on the cabinet, we needed six men to do that. Um, that's how many people we got. Probably realistically, we only needed like four people to do it. I don't have footage of this, unfortunately, but I can tell you what we did. So you can hire these like glass sticker things or put a picture of them up. And basically they like suction cup to the glass and then it gives you a handle to hold on to. Um, I got about six of those from Kennard's Hire. Um, there's heaps of those here in Australia. And I think it cost me less than $100 to hire the six of them. With the six guys here, it was super easy to get the tank on top. However, it was very, very stressful. After paying so much and waiting so long, there was a lot on the line if something went wrong. But thankfully, it was just fine and we got the tank on top of the cabinet. Uh, with no water in it, the cabinet was actually still able to be adjusted slightly in place. The things that I really like about this cabinet is that it's such a sleek and simple design. I really like how it's just comprised of the four doors on the front there and the wood seems like really nice quality. It's very heavy though. Another nice feature of the cabinet is that the hinges are PVC coated to prevent them from rusting. And then the door has a soft close feature like that. And it's also push open, which is really nice. Another thing that the cabinet has that is also really nice is if you can see on the side here, it's got some little self-leveling feet on the bottom of it too. And you can't really view them from the front with the doors there, but you can see them a little bit on the side just there. Things that I don't like about the cabinet as much, there really isn't many things. I'm being super picky with this. The only things that I could think of is that it does pick up oil and water and fingerprints and stuff like that quite a bit, which can be difficult to get rid of. The other thing is sometimes the door with the soft close feature, it can get a little bit stuck. Um, 
but most of the time it's pretty good. I mean, it's not doing it right now. Sometimes they can be a little bit hard to close. And then the other thing is that the back of the cabinet is quite open. It's probably a little bit hard to see. It's probably actually easier if I show you through here. So you see the canister filter there and I've actually got a soundproof mat there, but it's got quite wide openings in the back. And so I find that with the canister filters, it doesn't contain the sound super well. And there is quite a bit of vibration that the cabinet tends to pick up. The other thing that's worth mentioning is that the doors were quite hard to get them to be straight. This is as good as we could get them to be. And so it just took a little bit of fiddling with the hinges um, to get them to not stick out as much as possible, that it's really not that noticeable. So as for the tank itself, it's made of ultra clear sapphire glass, which is a type of low iron glass. So I did a little bit of research into it and normal glass, which is sometimes called clear glass, can have a bit of a greenish tint to it, um, particularly when it's thick. So if you have a look at the edges here, they kind of look almost like blue and clear, um, not see-through, but clear. If this was a normal glass, this would look pretty much black because of the iron that's in the glass. And so the low iron glass also just makes it a bit clearer to actually look through the tank. Now the silicone in the tank is called straight edge silicone. So if you have a look here, you can see how it's just literally joint on the very edge of the glass. It doesn't have that kind of thick layer of silicone that a normal tank would have. And the straight edging just makes it look, the joints look really neat. So what I'll do is I'll give you a bit of a close up of the glass and what it looks like. So as you can see, it's quite thick. And because it's so thick, you'll need to get lights um, that can fit over the glass. So these are the A AI Prime freshwater lights that I've got on here. So the only things that I would say are cons of the tank is that the silicone here, I'll give you a close up of it. Sometimes what happens is the algae gets a bit caught in between and I have to get my nail to kind of like scrape it out. Um, you can see a little bit of it down here, but obviously that's not a big issue. Every tank is gonna get algae. Um, the only other thing is, so this tank didn't come with any imperfections at all. The only thing that we ever found was the tiniest little air pocket, which I don't think I'm even going to be able to find it for you. It's so tiny, just a tiny little bubble in the tank. That was literally the only imperfection that it came with. The other thing that is good to be aware of is that this glass scratches very, very easily because it is low iron glass. So I've scratched it once that I'm aware of unfortunately right here if you can see that what happened was I was actually using this flipper and I think a little tiny grain of sand got caught in it and then that was enough to scratch it but it's nothing too obvious it's fairly minor but you've just got to be really careful with this glass Another thing to mention is that this tank is quite naked. So the only thing that it comes with in addition to the tank itself is the self-leveling mat, which you can see under here. 
Other than that, you don't get anything with it. You don't get a lid or a sump or anything like that. So if you've got fish that jump like what I do, then you're gonna to need to get a lid for it. I had the Red Sea lid for a little while, um, but that was a really big pain to put together and I didn't really like the way that it looked. So I ended up getting some custom lids made, which you can check out in my other video if you would like to have a look at what those look like on the tank. So is this tank value for money? Overall, I think hands down, yes. If you want a rimless tank, the craftsmanship that goes into this, um, the shipping, it being packaged so well, the low iron glass, how thick the glass is, I think that it is a good value for money tank. However, if you didn't mind and you don't need a rimless tank, then there would be other options that you'd be able to look at that wouldn't be as expensive as the water box tank. A rimless tank is good if you like the clean look of it, and as well, if you need to be getting big rocks and things like that and really getting your hands in there, then that's where having a rimless tank can come in handy. One thing to consider is that it is costly um, because you're only getting the tank or the tank in the cabinet and you will have to add your filtration and a lid if you're gonna need that and lining and things like that. So the tank and the cabinet alone is just one cost, but then you're gonna have so many other things that you're gonna need to add. If you want a rimless tank, then hands down, I 100% absolutely love this tank. It has been awesome. I appreciate it every day and I've just, I've really loved it. So if you found this video to be helpful, please let me know. I would love to hear what your thoughts are about the water box and let me know if you've got a water box tank or if you're thinking about getting one. Um, if you've got any questions too, put them down in the comments. If you'd like to see more of this content and more of my setups and reviews, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.